In this video we're going to delve a little further into visual web parts for SharePoint 2010. Now a visual web part is really an ASCX user control that's hosted inside a standard ASP.NET web part. And traditionally in previous versions developers could create this type of object by creating their web part class, a standard ASP.NET web part, and calling the load control method and passing in the path to a ASCX ASP.NET user control. And that was all very well and it was a supported development technique but it did raise issues and concerns perhaps around packaging and deployment. So it wasn't a, a very simple task to deploy this type of single entity if you like. Now with Visual Studio 2010 all of that deployment and packaging problems have gone away. So there's a new type of project item called a visual web part and literally the plumbing is provided for you so it allows you to concentrate on perhaps designing your user interface graphically and of course adding your business logic and code and Visual Studio will package all of that up for you the base class and the user control and deploy it to SharePoint. So let's take a look at a, a very simple example but one that goes a bit further than our previous video. What we have is a tree view control that we've added to our design surface and we can see the split view here we have the design surface at the bottom and the markup at the top. But we also have our code behind file and let's go through this line by line. The first thing we do is instantiate an SP web object so we're going to start interacting with SharePoint and then we start building tree nodes. The first thing we do is we set this web, our SP web object, equal to spcontext.current.web and that gets a reference to the, the website where our web part is currently running. And then we can start extracting properties of that such as its title and its URL and we can use that when we build a new tree node. So that's the display text and the navigate URL. Then we can add the node to the tree and then start iterating through the lists collection and for each of those SP list type objects we can add additional tree nodes underneath the, the web's parent. Then we can also iterate through the subwebs as well and perform very similar actions to build up an entire structure. The addWebs function is just really a helper function that adds additional tree nodes. So our first screenshot had a line of code that called addWebs for each subweb in our parent site if you like. So we do very similar operations which is to extract the title and the URL and then iterate through the lists collection of each subweb and build up our entire tree structure that way. We can deploy and add our web part to a web part page and this is what it looks like by default, a collapsed tree view. But if we expand the tree view control, we see that we have our main website with our lists such as announcements, calendar, links and so forth. But then we also have our subwebs. We have one called project management and it has its own lists of announcements, calendar, links, shared documents and so forth. And that web, that subweb, has its own child web as well called financials with its own list. So this was a, a bit more in-depth example of working with visual web parts.